Welcome back at 722 on a Sunday morning. Michigan has lost 60% of its original wetlands. It's impacting the wildlife. The Friends of the Rouge are working to protect what's left with a fun, hands-on event. Sally Petrella is here to tell us more. She is the project manager, Friends of the Rouge. Sally, uh, first of all, just thank you for joining us. Tell us what, what this is. So Friends of the Rouge is holding our annual Frog and Toad survey. Uh, it's an opportunity for people to learn how to identify the calls of our local amphibians and then go out at night and listen for them. Because the frogs and toads, uh, if I understand it correctly, kind of is an indicator of the health of the wetlands, correct? Yes, uh, all amphibians are very sensitive to changes in water quality. And uh, we use uh, frogs and toads kind of like the canary in the coal mine. So uh, if the wetland is healthy enough to support the frog and toad, then you're gonna hear a whole lot of frogs and toads calling. So we send our volunteers out there to listen for them and hopefully they will hear a whole lot of different frogs and toads and that's an indication that the wetland is healthy and we really need healthy wetlands to support the health of the Rouge River watershed which is the focus of Friends of the Rouge. So you're looking for volunteers and those volunteers will go through a workshop as well and, and you'll teach them or help them understand what you're looking for, correct? Yes, we're holding uh, two training workshops, one on March 6th and mar one on March 14th, and volunteers will get all the information and uh, all of the materials to be able to do this survey, including a CD of the calls, so they can learn the calls of our eight frogs and toads. Okay, I uh, want to hear some of these calls. What are, what are we going to be listening to, and, and what do you have here on the table? So, uh, frogs and toads could start calling us soon as next week you know you go you, you it's freezing outside but spring is coming and uh, one of the first uh, that you might hear would be the spring peeper it's our smallest frog um, but it's also the loudest know anybody like that uh, I don't uh... Really, really <laughs> tiny, really, really loud. Oh, so the, the, the spring peeper, it's really easy uh, to learn the call because it My just kids. says its name. <laughs> My go. kids are tiny and loud. <laughs> yes. So the spring peeper just says its name. And in the early spring, they'll, they'll, they're cold, so and they're not, they don't produce their own body heat, so uh, they don't move very fast, so they start out slow. As it gets warmer, they start calling really loud, really fast, and they can just be so, so, so loud. Wow, okay. And then another one that will call actually a little bit earlier than the spring peeper is the chorus frog. And some people call it the, the comb frog because the call sounds a little bit like if you took your thumb and you ran it over the tip of a comb. That's so a good that's sound. the western chorus go. frog. And then the balloon. Okay, so this is an odd one. This is the northern leopard frog. It has a call that sounds a little bit like a snore. Or That'll be in my ear all day now. <laughs> yep, yep. That's great. And then one more. This frog is a bigger frog. Doesn't start calling until it's more like 60 degrees consistently. And this would be the green frog. So it sounds a little bit like a banjo string. Interesting. You learn something new every day, Sally. I'm I didn't know so many sounds uh, the frogs and toads had. Yep. Look yep. at that. Mm -hmm. We're providing the information for you here on Fox 2 News Weekend. Sally Petrella, Friends of the Fruit Rouge, uh, there's the information. You've got a couple of events coming up, back-to-back -back Saturdays uh, in Plymouth there as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, and we stuff. would love to have people come participate in our sur sur survey. It's a whole lot of fun. Absolutely. Great stuff. We'll be